Welcome to Gaming with Scott presents Marvel Superheroes. Join us each week as our intrepid heroes follow a path of adventure and attempt to save the world and each other from the dangers of the universe. Starring Martin Davis, Josh Elliott, John Garlic, Josh Jackson, and Rico Suarez, with me, Scott Troiano, running the table as the judge. Epic adventure and titanic struggles await you beyond this music. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Gaming with Scott. Tonight, uh, we're going to do uh, a little thing that we like to call behind the scenes. We're going to take the opportunity to clear up any confusion that our listeners might have had with our episodes so far. Uh, it has come to our understanding and our attention that not everyone is familiar with the Marvel role-playing game system, so we wanted to take an opportunity to clarify a few things, provide some baseline definitions, and explain a few of the things that you're going to be hearing in the podcasts, uh, or that you might have heard so far, or that you're about to listen to in the weeks to come. So we're going to go over the face rip system. We're going to talk about superheroes, antiheroes, and vigilantes. We're going to talk a little bit about power ranks, column shifts, talents and contacts, using a power in ways that it wasn't intended to be used at, other resources outside the Marvel Universe, such as DC Comics and their superhero universe, Cosmic Awareness and Time Travel, and True Invulnerability. Um, we wanted to take a few moments to discuss these items uh, and thought that they would uh, help give a little bit of insight into the type of play that you're going to hear in weeks to come. So let's start with Face Rip. Okay? Face Rip. F-A-S-E-R-I-P. That is the system that we're using. It stands for Fighting, Agility, Strength, Endurance, Reason, Intuition, and Psyche. Those are your base attributes. Who here has the highest fighting? I have a 75. Which form are we talking about? Oh, Gestalted? Oh, oh, oh Gestalted. Ah, yeah. okay. Well, we'll talk about alternate identities here in just a little bit. That's probably um, Rico. Let's, let's go with your Gestalted form. Uh, only a 75. Only what? 75. Right. 100. Now, you're 100? Yeah, I thought, yeah. I thought it was so you're a better. So you're a better fighter than both of them. <laughs> Some of us don't have energy vampirism and can boost our stats yeah. forever, permanently. Yeah. And yeah. what do we learn from that? Hate is going to hate. Right. Yeah, that's, what we learn. <laughs> that's what we learn from that. Yeah. So when we say face rip, what we're talking about is your primary abilities, your attributes. Um, this would be that the equivalent true. in D&D of your strength, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, dexterity, and constitution. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, from there, we have... Um, now, when we talk about that... We have a table that I'm going to provide a link to, okay? And it's a table with a bunch of columns on it, and the columns all have a rank, starting from really, really low of shift zero, which is zero points. So technically, you all have every power available, but it's all at shift zero, okay? <laughs> Theoretically. Okay, that's why. Don't don't look at me like that, Marty. Very, I can see the wheels turning. Marty's like, really? I have every power? Very shift zero? positive. Huh? Very positive outlook. It is. A, yeah, he's a, he's a silver lining kind of guy down there. He's yeah. like, so what you're telling me is I could... Roll 100. Roll so 100 on a shift zero. So how much karma do I have to spend? Yeah, yeah. Huh? So that I can roll that skill. Um, Energy vampirism is the one I go for right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, that is an incredible power. So... It starts with columns, and as the columns sh- move from the left at shift zero all the way up to the right at shift Z, which is uh, 500, there's gradation between them. And what you do on the left, uh, the left hand side, instead of the columns move from left to right, so the up and down is rolling from 01, which is the lowest roll you can roll, all the way up to double zero, which is 100. So the Marvel face rip system is a percentile. You need to roll certain percentiles. Okay, so if you've got an, uh, something at shift zero, which, I'm sorry, Marty, you don't have every power at shift zero. You b- buy into shift zero and move up from there. And that's how that's going to... I'm taking that away from you. But he's going to let you do that in the future at some point. Oh, maybe. absolutely. Oh, that's coming, and it'll come shortly. <laughs> so, which for you listeners would mean uh, December or January of this next year. Um, <laughs> ta-da. ta-da! So, if you're on shift zero... If you roll anywhere between a 1 and a 65, you roll what's called a white feet, okay? If you're going to roll on this table for resolution, you're rolling typically a, a feat, a strength feat, a fighting feat, an agility feat, a power feat. You know, I'm going to I'm going to try to fly through this hurricane and I have flight of 2 feeble. Well, in order to get a green feat, white feats are generally mean you fail. 
Green feet means you succeeded. Yellow feet generally means you succeeded with a bonus. And a red feet typically means you've over-succeeded. Or exceptional you've, you've, success. An exceptional success. Mm -hmm. So on a shift zero, if you roll from 1 to 65, you've had a white feet. You have failed the task you were attempting to do. If you roll a 66 to a 94, you've got a green feet. You've succeeded. If you roll 95 to a 99, you have a yellow feet. And at shift zero, your exceptional feat is only if you roll a natural 100. So shift zero sort of sucks. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So as we move up the list, generally around the middle is what's called incredible. Okay? Incredible is 40. Now, for the power levels of this game, this is this game's a little over a little overpowered. Okay? <laughs> if the middle of the chart is 40 and the top of the chart is 500. Um, then that tells you we jump from 40 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100, then 150, 200, 500. Okay, so it's sort of weighted. Okay, so if we look at 40, a failure is 1 to 30. To 30. A success is 31 to 60. No, 50. Yeah, no, 60. I do need to turn. Who took the lights out? That sucks. There we go. One, two, sixty. If I roll a sixty-one, nope, sixty-five. If I roll a sixty-six to ninety-four, that's a yellow, and then ninety-five and up is a red fee. Now most of our folks are rolling on seventy-fives and one hundreds. If we look at Unearthly 100, a failure is 1 to 15. 16 to 40 is a green feet. 41 to 75 is yellow feet. And then 76 and up is an exceptional success. So uh, at Unearthly, 25% of the time, you've got a chance for an exceptional success. An exceptional success. And on Unearthly, you only fail 16% of the time. Wow. Okay. So it's easy to see how the powers can scale up. So here's the two mechanisms that as a storyteller that we use. We can either say, hey, you've got your power and you need a red feet to pull off. Captain America is going to throw a shield and hit three guys. Bing, 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 and bounce it from guy to guy to guy. Okay. That is an exceptional feat. Or... Captain America dislocated his shoulder, and now he's got to try to make a really long throw to hit that guy over there. So I'm going to say that Captain America is show is throwing his shield at a minus four column shift. Yeah. So if Captain America has an agility of 50, we move four to the left, and we go 40, 30, 20, 10. So he drops from a 50 to a 10. Or if he had an unearthly, he would go from 100, 75, 50, 40, 30. So when I say you're at minus five column shifts, you're at minus eight column shifts, you're at minus two column shifts. That increases the difficulty because it increases the percentage of your failure and decreases the percentage of your success, um, success with bonus, or your general success, your success with bonus, and your exceptional success. Now, when we do things like um, throwing or punching, or general combat, we look at the very top of the chart, and we'll see there are there are a, a number of different types of attacks along the top. Um, blunt attacks, edge attacks, shooting attack, throwing, edge, throwing, blunt, energy, force, grapple, grabbing, escaping, charging, dodging, evading, blocking, catching, stun, slam, and kill. Each of those has on it, for example, if we take an energy attack, you uh, want to shoot dark force energy at him. If you roll a white, you miss. If you roll a green, you hit. If you roll a yellow, you bullseye. That means you can do a called shot. If you do a red, you have stunned your opponent. on a, or I'm sorry, red on an energy is a kill. So now I go over and say, on the kill table, I roll and say, white is, energy, uh, is endurance loss. Um, green is you take, you take the damage of the weapon. Um, yellow and red are no, that you did not kill them. So, the table itself says, all right, I want to grapple. Okay, that's one of Fenris' thing. He rolls his strength. 
A white is a miss, a green is a miss, a yellow is a partial, a red is, he has him in a hold. So what I can do then is say, all right, if he read it, if Fenderson is, is at a disadvantage, I'm going to move you down column shifts. Okay. If you absolutely need to pin him down in the grapple, you need to roll red. And that's how that works. That makes sense. Any questions or comments about face rip? New? Yay! I need to do the kill shot more if it goes off endurance. Right? Yeah. There you go. Right. So we got power ranks. We got Now, each of your powers has a power rank. You can buy up power ranks with karma, and we'll go into that a little bit later. We're going to have a karma episode in about a month. I'm sorry, in about two days. Two weeks. Two weeks. i got to remember what the schedule is. We come out weekly on this show, don't we? So it's like money pit, right? Two yeah. weeks? Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Um, okay. So, let's talk about superheroes, anti-heroes, and vigilantes. Who here is a hero? Raise your hand so we can see it. Raise on the your hands. I, I can't <laughs> see. I don't see any hands in the air right now. Uh, I can't honestly say that I'm a hero. Why not? Were you, were you the Boy Scout when we Ooh, started this a year ago? Great, great topic. I was. I you were the Boy be... Scout. Yeah. What happened? Um, it's, it's there was a stuff. meeting that happened, and I got a taste of outrageous uh, power. Yes. Twelve step program. Yeah. That and, uh, got the better of me, and now I just want to achieve that again. So I've kind of dipped from the uh, hero scale. A oh bit. my goodness gracious, golly gosh! All right, Marty, are you a hero? Nope. What are you? I am an anti-hero. You are an anti-hero. What is there, whatever does that mean? I am allowed without karma loss. Ooh, let's let's talk. Let's before you get into that. Marty's about to talk about something that happens in the Marvel game. Why don't the superheroes just splat the bad guys? Why capture them and put them in jail? Why does Batman capture the Joker? Instead of just running him down with the Batmobile and crushing his skull like a watermelon. Because we all know but that the, the Joker is going to escape again, and you're just going to see him over and over and over. Why, Marty, why doesn't Batman kill the Joker? Because he's a vigilante, isn't he? Yeah. And if, if you are a hero or a vigilante, you will lose karma if you kill someone. And remember, karma's your XP, boys and girls. You can't buy stuff, you can't use stuff, and karma can be used to enhance roles. Yeah. So but can it, can it be can you go with negative karma? No, you can go down to zero and that's it. So once you hit zero, there's a small period of time where people go, "Well, if I'm at zero already, I'm gonna kill everything." And then I, as a storyteller, have to dissuade them of that, and then and then we move on from there. So you were gonna say, as an anti-hero, you get to do what? I, as an anti-hero, along with my story, my villains, my main villains, anyone of their organization that stands in my way, and then themselves, I, I'm allowed to X them out. Right? I'm allowed to destroy everyone Splat. within that storyline and not get a karma penalty. Anyone else, and it's acquiring karma penalties like, like average, like normal. You're right. So, much like Frank Castle, the Punisher, uh, the, the guy and organization that ordered the hit on his family... He can wipe out anybody in that organization in a direct line between him and the boss that called the hit on his family. If he goes down to the park and there's some dude littering who's not involved at all and he pulls out a gun and shoots the guy, karma loss. Okay? You lose XP for doing that. So it does sort of keep you, I don't want to say Boy Scout. I got to say, though, my character's leaning more towards hero. Bad boy. Somebody's got to. So, it started off anti-hero, and it's leaning more now, after a year, towards hero. Whereas, Rico started out hero, and is now leaning more towards anti-hero. Yep, he's rolling towards vigilante and, and picking up steam. Yeah. Which is awesome. Which is awesome. It's so, Fenris, awesome. what are you, Fenris? It's, it's not awesome. Uh, vigilante. You are a vigilante. Well, what does that mean? Well, with what Marty was saying, I can kill the big bad whoever wronged me or blah, blah, blah in my backstory, but any one of his, his or her henchmen in the way, I cannot kill, or I will incur a karma loss. Absolutely. More specific. I should have been an anti-hero. Yeah. It would have been easier. It would have been easier. Yeah. Hero and anti-hero are pretty simple. Heroes are, I'm the good guy, I protect everything. Property and people and 
faith and the American way, antiheroes go, oh, that guy over there, I'm going to dead him a lot. Oh, you're going to get in between me and him? Well, then I will dead you too. It sucks to be you. Vigilantes, they got to work outside the system. they got to walk a thin line. they got to walk a very thin line. So that's the difference between heroes, vigilantes, and antiheroes. Yay. Talents and contacts. Talents and contacts. You guys have contacts, don't you? Yep. Yeah. Who Couple you guys, of them. Who do you guys have as contacts? Since you wanted to go over that earlier, now we'll go over it officially. Oh, so we all have different contacts. Some of those are actual other superhero contacts. And then mundane contacts, like you know, Father Joseph down at the parish or the chief of police for Marion County, so on and so forth. Um, for me, some of my superhero contacts, I have Nightcrawler, Beast, and Doctor Strange. So and people, people you can call on and hopefully time of need as long as Scott will allow. Right. And uh, he's already we've already called on Doctor Strange and paid him a gem mm-hmm. to come help us out, which was really kind of nice. And Marty gave it to him, and that was sort of neat. We poured one out for his homies, too. Right, right. right. Some, yeah, really some really expensive bourbon <laughs> from my house. Yeah. 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 I really, really, really wanted to keep that gem. Yeah, you did. We know you did. <laughs> we know you did. All right, Marty, what contacts you got? Uh, Callisto and Legion. And uh, for a lesser extent, Morlocks. Well, actually, to a, a greater extent, but... That's an awesome extent. extent because of the breadth of what they do. Yeah. Right. Quay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get back to that eventually. You're in outer space right now, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's all right. But you're not a new contact. Morat. Oh, Morag. Yeah. The lizard yeah. man. The lizard who, man. Who will <laughs> suck your soul out if you believe in such things. Right. But he gave you a face, so we're happy with him. He finished my uh, my physical composition. <laughs> yeah. There you yeah. Go. He, if that's what you want to call it. He gave you a hell of a money Rather, shot. he co-opted my physical composition. Hey, <laughs> you were like, I need to be finished. Oh, okay. I can do that. Sure. I, I do genetic engineering. Let's go. All right. I, I do want to say <clears throat> the whole reason why I wanted to do that was just so I could... Uh, Explore the uh, the Guthrie storyline, which that t- totally circumvents what's <laughs> entirely. The, what's the Guthrie storyline? With with uh, Tomahawk, the yeah. fact that he's not he's not Mister Sinister's son, his genetic creation. He's actually a Guthrie. He's a member of the Guthrie family. Okay, for Josh. And who are the Guthries? There you go. Like uh, Cannonball. Okay. Uh, they're they're they are a famous mutant family. They're a family from Kentucky with like a billion siblings, and all but I think one have powers. That's racist. And Kentuckians are a race. <laughs> so, so yeah. Wait, did you say Kansas or Kentucky? Kentucky. Like oh, apologies to all of our Kentucky listeners <laughs> for having a living. And, uh, you know so, what? We don't have any Kentucky listeners. It's really kind of odd. Although we are we are very big in the niches. Really. Really. Meaning. Polynesia, Indonesia, and Tunisia. Tunisia, seriously, oh, really? seriously. Well, I hello to all up. of our Asia friends. Yes, hello, hello to all of our Asian friends. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh. I was, I have no idea. There you go. That's fantastic. Big okay. following in the Asias. I don't know why. Yeah, but th- we thank you for listening, Asias. Because they have good taste. Stay strong, baby. It's because they have good taste. Is why. That's they're, right. They are discernible. Right? They are discern. They are discerning customers. I love Moroccan food. Right. That's the thing I know. It's well, it's not in Asia, but it's close. It's I get you. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> Ish. Eh, don't be the ugly American. You're not. We love them. They're oh, great. Well, I'm still American. Yes. Yeah. You're not American? What? Okay, no. so moving on. <laughs> okay. Murka. Murka. So, uh, all right. So, yeah, you got a new contact there. Happy? Who's happily saving your face right now. But we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, write him down. All right, uh, Rico, what do you got contact-wise there? I don't have anybody interesting. Uh, I have the mayor of Indianapolis, uh, Greg Ballard, um, Rick Height, the IMPD chief, and then Archangel, and then um, the Watcher. The okay, Watcher. so I lied. I guess I got a couple cool Yeah, you right. got some great right. stuff. Now, now, is the Watcher uh, Yin? I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. All right, good. Just check it. Would you consider her a contact? No. No? Okay. No. Right. She's good pretty you. fickle. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we have women listeners. Come on, women listeners. We love you. We love you, women listeners. All right. So, contacts you can call on whenever you want, and they'll do anything you want, right? No, no, not not normally. There's, no? there's usually a price to pay. 
A uh, right. little quid pro quo. Right. Okay. They, also, don't, they don't just do stuff for, for nothing. You gotta pay to play. They may not be able to do anything at all depending yeah. on the situation in the story. So right. It's true. They may not be applicable. Right. You like, for example, I know the Watcher is a hands-off guy. He won't do anything. Right. But he may have some insight for me. Sure. He could give me some information, but he's not going to lift a pretty little finger for me. Right. Or what goes on, because he's the Watcher. He just watches. I still don't know how he would impart that information. He doesn't say <laughs> Did you ever read the Dark yeah. Phoenix or the Phoenix Saga? Yes. Yeah, he says Dark Plex. Phoenix Saga. Yes, he does. Well, I love that series. That was that, awesome. That one's dead. I own the trade paperback. That one's dead. It doesn't matter. I'm a time traveler. It doesn't matter if he's dead. He's got a point. Boom. So, or let's say the mayor of Indianapolis is really willing to get up in the middle of the night and come out and do whatever you need. If you're in the Phantom Zone and you call him from there... <laughs> Not a lot he can do. No, no. The mundane contacts are for mundane stuff. Right, yeah. right, right. Understandable. But Not somebody had to have them because I think I was the only person with mundane contacts in the city of Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. in the beginning. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. You betcha. And even though if you did make a call from the Phantom Zone, you did learn that it would go through. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go through. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't, that was all kinds of... Yeah, that was, hey, dimensional... Yeah, there it is. I was, I was surprised he even got a signal. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was being real generous there. Yeah, real generous. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't just want to go, oh, you've got a cool ability? No. I rolled oh. a red feet. In my defense, it wasn't right. red feet. Right, it was. It was, it was, but I didn't want to just go, no. Oh, he rolled a red feet on a thing that was really, no. I didn't want to do that. I had to give him something. Yeah, sure it works. No. You got a dork? <laughs> yeah. Okay, talents. Who's got them? What do they do? How do you use them? What do you got, Marty? What do you got, Rico? I have some talents. Yeah, baby. <laughs> um, uh, I rolled some talents. Um, I rolled a. Uh, oh, by the way, your talents suck. Go ahead. Boom. <laughs> you well, your talents suck if you're the GM. Um, I rolled a uh, weapon specialist, um, weapon mastery, or sorry, weapon master, and also weapon mastery. Um, those were the three talents I rolled. Right, However, the, Kung Fu, the legend continues. The, well, right. these are very specialized talents. They only work, right. um, they work passively. I don't have to tap into them to use them. Um, because I have them on my sheet, each talent imparts me with a boost or a, a column shift. Um, weapon specialist gives me plus two column shift and plus one on our initiative roll if I'm wielding a weapon. Right. Any weapon. Doesn't matter what kind of weapon. Gestalted. Same, plus two column shift. Gestalted. That's no, insane. that's dirty. That's with your scythe. I'm thinking yeah. that's dirty as hell. Yeah, but I have like Weapon Master, and then Weapon Master, um, I roll, I'm a Weapon Master with a scythe. Right. Um, and scythe is my weapon of choice in my Gestalted form. So while I'm wielding a scythe, that's an additional plus one shift. So that's three. So that's a plus three shift and a plus one initiative with my weapon. I also have a Weapon Mastery with sharp weapons. Uh, my scythe and, is a sharp yeah. weapon. Yep. Yeah. And that is an additional shift. So I have a cumulative plus four shift bonus, yes. plus one initiative when I'm wielding my scythe. And edge attacks go off of fighting, which we learned I'm at 75, which is unearthly. Or, sorry, monstrous. Uh-huh. But if you shift up four way four times shift because Z. I get plus four bonus, it gives me a shift Z while using my scythe. Which is 500. Which is Yes, which is 500. It's the equivalent to having 500 in the set. Yeah. Which you have to roll a uh, one, a two, or a three. I have to roll. To fail. Yes, I have to roll less than a four to fail with any edged attack. Right. So unless you're rolling a one, a two, a three, you're gonna hit. Yeah. Yeah. For our Tunisia list listeners, that means when he has a scythe, he wins. Yeah. Yeah. He he, he wins. wins. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. Oh, and um, it's obscene. Yeah. I picked up a new language as a talent. Yes. Conversational Arkanoid. Yay! It's true. Um, <laughs> and I learned that because uh, I used my cosmic awareness and total memory during what well, you guys heard back when, and uh, learned the ability to speak conversational Arkanoid. No big deal. No big deal. And he's used it a couple of times. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's been surprisingly more useful than you, you thought. Hell, I'm never going to use that, right? Yeah. Now, right. All the times that I've failed to... Time travel because, you know, Arkanoids. Arkanoid cycle couldn't abuse it. Oh, sons of guns. <laughs> sons of guns. Sons. <laughs> what talents you got, Marty? I only have one, and it's organic chemistry. 
And you use the heck out of that talent, don't you? I use that every every turn, almost, it mm-hmm. feels like. Yes. Uh, I, I use it because I lean on that for my molecular conversion power. So i got to know how crap's put together mm-hmm. so I can take it apart. Yep. And yep. We'll put, put it back together. together. Yeah. yeah. You made my armor from that. Yep. The graphene yep. or whatever. And uh, also... Uh, What's his name? The our, our lackey or uh, it's not a lackey, Jason. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's not a person. He's a he's a sidekick. He's yeah. part of the team. He's a sidekick, dude. He's part of the team. Yeah. yeah, but he's not a real person. He's like our slow little cousin Earl. So when so when Jason gets the gem and puts it in his chest, I'm gonna be jealous. He's gonna have a <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna be jealous of not a person, right? Exactly. Okay. So I'd make that jealous jealous of not a person. I was about to say, isn't the in game? Familial, familial wise, isn't he like your half brother or cousin? I don't know, is he? No, I, I think we went over that. We touched over that. Did we go over that? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we did. I think I, we did. I'm yeah, pretty maybe sure we did. I remember do you, that. do you remember his name? I do. Jason. G A C H I N. Yeah. 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 Love you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's related to you. Ah, uh, he is related. He to you. is. My blood. Yeah, he's like half half brother. Half or you. Same half brother or something. Same father. He's lucky. Yeah, same father. Different mother. I get her, get her round, round, round. I get her round. All, da, the da, guys. Da. All of them. He what? All the guys. Yeah. Hey, Fen- right. Fen- Fenner, my dad. He got around. He does. He didn't really discriminate. Also, Jason's got cool powers. Yeah. The last person he touches, yeah. he can mimic their power. He's that's a, a pretty awesome power. He's a mimic. He's awesome. He can yeah. do whatever the heck he wants. That's, well, why, and, that's why he's and, a sidekick. Don't and, let him touch you. And that, which was the funny part, was Marty with his super sleuthy, I'm going to catch everything that's power related at all in any comic awareness of all time. I got, I, I stumped Marty for just a little bit with, because I was able to hide it from the rest of the group long enough. That they were like, no, he doesn't have power, dude. He doesn't have power. Hey. Because he didn't touch anybody that had anything horribly outrageous in the beginning. Until, well, it started when he was, when you tried to throw him out of the van when you picked up the van to go somewhere. Right. You wanted to throw him out of the van. Oh, and he, yeah. And, and he and, touched and, you, and he, yeah. like, almost ripped half the side of the van to stay yes. And you grabbed him and pulled his jacket off, uh-huh. and you were like, how is he stronger like, than a jacket? Like, this is a jean on? jacket. What the hell is this? Like, and it, that's when you started to go, wait a minute. Yeah. And it was like, no, Marty, you're just strong enough to tear his clothing. Yeah, that's right. all. No, that's <laughs> not how that works. Wuss. <laughs> I right. should put physics mm-hmm. on here. There you go. <laughs> right, to know how to use it right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, no, no, no. All right, Talents. Uh, Fenris. Fenris. So I have, I have four. I have Martial Arts C, which is for grappling. Right. And they... Ugh, pardon me. And it! Yeah. Um, yeah, the the thing that gets me is the only... Well, not the only bad. One of the bad things about the face rip system, and there are very few bad things about this system. It's really a good system. Um, is that things like Martial Arts Talents, they've got Martial Arts A, B, C, D, E... Like, really? You couldn't have come up with name? Okay, great. So you have Martial Arts C, C, which is grappling. Plus one column shifts for grappling and for dodging. Nice. So that should probably be Martial Arts G. Oh. Or, or J, or, you know, something that makes too sense logical. for... Yeah. Too yeah. logical. Um, s- second one is Occultist, which is two column shifts for trying to figure out anything occulty. That's been really good, a dual-edged sword. We've gotten really good insights into like the runes or whatever rune, that we yeah. had uh, when we were where at uh, the Grissom Air Force Base. And then there's been times where the GM Scott has looked at me and said, "Yeah, it's an occult event." Yeah, and that's what we got. Yeah. So right. it depends on how giving our GM is. Oh. Well, you know, if you had cosmic awareness, you would just know the answer. Well, yeah. And if I had a shrink power, I think I could, I could do more things. Who knows? Hey, Nick Chalk. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, Third talent, first aid, which is good for a vigilante who doesn't want to kill everybody except the big bad. Right. First aid lets you stabilize somebody who's about to die. Yep. Good stuff. Fourth and finally, escape artist. Plus one column shifts for lock picking, for getting out of knots, contortionism, uh, just trying to get away. That would have come in handy at the base you were at. I when... wouldn't let him use it. Yeah. Well, I know because there was that rune there. Right. And I had to come up with that quick because I was like, ooh, he's an escape artist. Uh, yeah. So I have. So I, have, I escape! 
I'm captured. I'm captured. I know. So what do you do? I just keep. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't, hey. I didn't want to go there. Well, I didn't want. I didn't want that to be the instant answer. It's like, ah, oh, how, yeah. how do you capture the guy with? How do you capture the guy with escape artist? You glue him to the ground. That's what you do. You shoot him. You shoot him you dead. You capture oh. him with death. There you, you go. go. You capture him with foam. You, you, you go. You go to this handy dandy sheet and you go for a kill shot. That's what you do. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah and I don't true. want to kill you. That would be bad. Thank Capture you. it all over the floor. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Captured him all over the. Yeah. We'll get the squeegee and we'll actually round him up now. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Other resources outside of the Marvel Universe, such as the DC. Do you guys like the DC inclusion? I'm okay with it. Eh. Marty, you don't care? Eh. You don't, you don't care. I, I prefer straight Marvel, but for other characters at the time, they, they had characters that leaned on DC stuff. I don't know if any characters do now, but... Keeps I'm us on our toes. Okay, well, then, then let me ask you this. Um, the fact that Wells had Lex Luthor as a contact I think that added an interesting twist when he called on his contact, which I don't care how versed you are in comic books. If you take Lex Luthor and I tell you during character creation, and I did this, you know Lex Luthor's a bad guy, right? And he went, sure, but he's the type of corporate contact my scientist guy might reach out to. And I went, yeah, fair enough. Okay, works for me, but you know he's a bad guy, right? Yes, I do. Okay, once I tell you that, You've it's said it you. three times. <laughs> and then it's like three times. It's on you. Yeah. So the, when he tapped that contact in the manner that he did, and it brought down the holy beam of fire, yeah. um, what was you guys' takeaway to, oh, well, that's A, that's yeah. a DC thing, and B, well, that's what you get when your contact's a bad guy and you call yeah. him up to blow up a building for you. I picture Josh Elliott saying, so you're telling me that I poked the honey badger and it bit my face off? Huh. Who would have thought? <laughs> right. <laughs> I I have a slightly different uh, view on this, yeah. considering the uh, light death uh, explosion building thingy. Yeah, it was uh, right next to uh, where all my allies live. Right. And uh, it, it, <laughs> it murdered uh, about half of them. So uh, yeah, no, no, there are consequences. Yeah. Not not just, oh, it's one of the guys that's on a sheet. No, it's, oh, you used it. Now I'm coming after you. Good. <laughs> Excellent. That's, yeah. There are consequences. There are always consequences. Mm-hmm. Excellent. What were your thoughts on it? Um, I don't know if they've heard that podcast yet, but I was pretty rude and made some horrible threats. Oh, yeah, no. That, I, that is I, released. I, Oh, was it? Okay, when I told Wells that he'd never ever see his family again after he slaughtered all those people in that in the Nimbus building? Didn't hear this. Wow. Oh, I was not here. Oh, I was not yeah. there for that when one. He, when he ha- when he had that orbital strike on that building, I told Wells that he will never see his family ever again for With, slaughtering all those innocent people. But here's where the conversation. But here's where this gets deep. Is like two episodes previous. He 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 and Wells had a go between where he said. No, I'll go back and get them. You know what? I've got time travel. We'll put together a plan. We'll go back and save your family. Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> Independence Day happens, and he got up in Wells' face and went, you will never see your family again. It was rough. And that's when the second personality emerged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll call it what you will. <laughs> it went south. And it, it was went, pretty terrible. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was. I was like, holy jeez. I yeah, was, was not good. there for that, and I would have You got to listen up. You gotta, gotta, gotta uh, go back yeah. and listen to this. Waiting with with bated breath. So I think they're out. No, they are. He just doesn't have a way to listen to them right now because we're recording. What he said, times two. All right. Okay. So uh, <laughs> about the inclusion of DC, mm-hmm. I I myself would like just straight Marvel because it anchors it better in people's minds, so they don't have well, I don't know what's going on because right. you know what I mean. Right. But beyond that. That's, that's my well, idea. once we get over the Superman hurdle, I think that'll be we'll yeah. We have a heck of a lot. We less. have one more thing to deal with that, and I think we'll we'll pretty much be done with the DC crossover because I don't think any of us have any DC contacts. No. Well, yeah. in comic worlds, always reboot. So. Unfortunately, yeah. right. Yeah. And they always amalgamate too. So I mean, right. it's not in the realm of impossible. It has happened. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, um, tell me about cosmic awareness. 
Oh, that's me. Oh, that's you. I have cosmic <laughs> awareness. Uh, what about who? Um, <laughs> what you want to know? Cosmic awareness <laughs> is a power that, um, if you have, enables you to tap into all of the information in the cosmos. Um, it would allow me to, if I really wanted to, just break the game. I could roll Cosmic Awareness, and any other storyteller would have to give me the answer, because that's how Cosmic Awareness works. Uh, Scott's caveat, however, with Cosmic Awareness is, yeah, you, you can have Cosmic Awareness, you can use it, but I do it differently. He gives me um, a series of letters or code or something like that, and depending on how well I roll with my Cosmic Awareness, my ability to... Um, sift out the information from all of the information in the universe um, is how mu- how easy or how much of a clue I get to get my answer. He doesn't just give me the answer. And Cosmic Awareness can gimp a game, and I try my best not to use it. And in fact, I'm pretty adamant against not using it. Yep. I think I've said I'm not going to use it more times than I have actually used it. I agree with that. And there was one time when it was words on pages in paragraphs in lines in a book. In a book. Yeah. And it was, here you go, here's a whole pile of numbers and here's a book. Figure out what I mean by the numbers and the book. And it's like, oh crap, alright. So it's going to take you a little bit of time. Why don't you go sit over in a corner and thumb through a book and people say, well that's really mean, that's not like you should, cause awareness, you should give me the answer. Well, it takes you a time. It takes you an amount of time to sift through everything, everything in the universe. Yeah. It's absolutely no fun. To oh, and um, based yeah. on the power rank of your cosmic awareness, is how many times you can use it per session before you actually go crazy <laughs> from um, knowledge <laughs> overload. Yep. You don't touch that's the... that's why you don't see Charles Xavier always using Cerebro. That's why it yeah. taxes yeah. him every time he uses it. Yeah, and, or else he just you know. Well, you know, I just wear that. I just uh, it and wear that all the time. Uh, no, you wouldn't. Dark Phoenix Saga. Um, the guy that had Xavier-like powers. That was a vegetable. Jean uh, Grey was in his mind in the hospital, and that's where it all. Do you, you know who I'm talking about, right? I forget his yeah, name. Yeah, but I can't remember his name. Either. Okay, I'll you, look it up later. Yeah, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you can only touch the divine so many times. Yeah, yeah. Before the well, divine you, touches you. Well, He's not divine. Yeah. Uh, he's not divine. Well, well just... the guy in the comic book is not. I am divine. Right. Your character? Yeah. yeah. I thought you weren't divine. Just well, my gestalted form is. But so, he has... Uh, Guardian Angel slash Tyler Freeboard has rolled up a power which we didn't read to the next page on until later, and it sort of was different. He has an ability that's called Alter Ego. And when you have Alter Ego, you write up a oh. second character sheet. It's reduced, that's right? That's significantly reduced. I vaguely remember this. Okay? And in your Alter Ego form, you are like average yeah. Joe. Yeah, you're average Mortal guy. guy. Yeah. And then you pick well, what... Well, not, not really, though. I mean, the stats that he has. Well, what stat? All right. Let's, what, let's go through your stats. Tyler's? Yeah. Plain old Tyler? Plain old Tyler. Uh, he's got a fighting of two. He's got an agility of six, a uh, strength of four, an endurance of ten, a reason of ten, an intuition of two, and a psyche of two. He is between feeble and good. Only two of his stats are good. Everything else is feeble, poor, typical. Well, and it's... what's his total health? Uh, twenty-two when 22. he's not gestalted. Wow. But I mean, but what? What's ten for like a regular human being? Well, yeah, he's good. Ten, he's ten is good. good. It's just good. That means you're okay. You're 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 looking at remarkable or incredible or Olympic athletes. Okay. That, okay. That was awesome. When when you get to yes, professional are athletes are excellent, and to, and good is when you're good at something, you're at a rank ten. Typical is rank six, and that's just you know I can drive a car. Are you a, are you a race car driver on a track? No, I'm just a typical driver. Okay. You're at a six. Wow. That that makes that makes sense. You're mortal. Yeah, I mean, Versus. Yeah. Four, which is poor, yeah. and two, which is feeble. You know, when you get an eighty-year-old that can't run up a flight of stairs, because why? Because they're feeble. No, it's because they're lazy. 
Well, oh, yeah, that's why. well, yeah. apologies to all of our elderly <laughs> listeners. <laughs> in Tunisia, what the hell? Yeah, right? It's a double whammy. I don't know that we've got a lot of elderly listeners in Tunisia. I can't get the ages. All that's... of our hexagenarians. Yeah, all of our octogenarians. So, so, they're they're going to write in. Now they're going to know Marty's going to stir up the rabble. Yeah. So here's At about 4.30 tomorrow when it's dinner time, I'm going to get a whole bunch of email. Yeah. So when do you revert to that? From yeah. the RNs. No, I'm saying, when do you go to that alter ego? or When I'm not gestalted. Anytime I'm not gestalted. Okay. So, he has to roll his power feet for his gestalt power, and then he, as Tyler Freeborn, joins with another entity to gestalt, okay. and now he is no longer his alter ego, he is guardian angel. That type of gestalt, he then, with the power gestalt, you have to pick a type of being to gestalt with. Celestial, divine, demonic, some type of entity, mm-hmm. and his was the divine. Cool. So, very good all the way around. We like you a lot. Mm-hmm. All right, time travel. Talk to me about time <laughs> travel. Oh, that's me again. I have time travel. You do have time travel. Um, time travel can also break a game. Yeah, it's... Time travel can, in fact... Well, we're picking on Rico tonight. What? Oh, no, you're, no, you haven't broken the game. It's been you've you're been wonderfully mature with your powers. It's been very nice. Um, time travel is is time travel. It lets you go backwards in time. It lets you go forward in time. Any point in time that you can possibly imagine, you can go there. So, so do you have any questions for me on how I do time travel? No, okay. because I think your time travel works exactly my, like my time travel. I think I can only time travel back to points I have been. Or I'm going to go to, not points that are unforeseen. Like, I can't jump 75 years into the future. Because I don't, I, I wouldn't know, I, I wouldn't even know if I'd be alive. You end up in a mountain, too. Who knows? Yeah, and the, yeah, the, the entire, you know, landscape could change. So. It's, it's not a time machine. You can't watch it change. Yeah. And move along. I mean, I, I don't know. I, how are you running exactly? Okay. So do you have questions? Yes, Scott. What, 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 what questions you got? How do you run your time travel? Oh, yeah. Um, do, well, and, and, the, not so much the Willow Mountain appeared, but everybody asks the question, well, if I go back in time and kill my own grandfather, then that means I won't have been born, and then I'll die, and then everything will be horrible. It's a, fa- it's a paradox. <laughs> um, okay. Was fire Marshal? Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> exactly, that's exactly how. Everybody. That's exactly how it was said just yesterday. All yes. the time. So, here's my gig. Your past has already happened. The past for you is already set in that you were born. So if you travel back in time, having already been born, and you kill the guy that was your grandfather, you've already been born. Like, that event in your timeline has already happened. So you can go back and kill him. Well, it would make a paradox, because he would never have sex with your with your grandmother, and then you would never have been born, and there in it that is. Timeline. In that timeline. For your grandfather and grandmother... And in that alternate timeline, oh, for split. them, totally different. you are never born. For every choice that is made, it creates an alternate timeline. Exactly. And that's and how... So, so people are like, oh, well, if you went back, it would be a paradox. No. No, it wouldn't be a paradox. Because what happened was, your grandmother and grandfather got busy, had your parent, they got busy with your mom or your dad, and you were born and went back in time and killed your grandfather. That's what happened. And then you went home and went, ha ha! Bob's your uncle. There it is. You just killed someone in some alternate timeline. Yeah. Murder. <laughs> yeah. That's Murder. Cool. By the I, way, lose I all your I do your my best not to use money. that a whole lot either. Right. Um, I mostly use it to get other uh, copies of myself. Yes. yes, and there have been one or two times that I have denied you the use of time travel. Yeah. Because you were like, aha, I have a fix. And I'm like, mmm, you're um, uh, No. Let me see. Let me try. Wait, let me go with no. Too easy. Needs right, some and that needs some struggle. Needs, yeah, and there have been a couple of times. Um, by the way, uh, this is this is the last wrap up of the DC things as we are moving forward. Uh, people from Krypton have an innate ability to stabilize time around them. Just throwing that out. So when it's like, aha, no, there's not a lot of time travel going on around the Kryptons, which is one of the reasons because if time, if Krypton, if Kryptonians were as keen as they were, they would have traveled back in time and evacuated their planet before it exploded and never sent Superman in. Yep. Thanks for playing. Okay. Would that be from a different timeline? But that would be from a different timeline. Dun, dun, dun! 
So, that's how uh, that's how I tend to do timelines and cosmic awareness. And Rico, again, is incredibly responsible with his power usage, and I would like to commend and thank him. Thank you, Rico. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, I thank also, I also uh, would, would like to, uh, to, to say that as well. Because those are two easily breaking yeah. powers. That's and why I don't use them yeah. as, as much as other people probably would. I was I was yeah. worried. I was worried that might happen, and I'm glad it happened. Though there was that one time I did abuse it to save Wells' family. I was incredibly but, jealous with it. That was for but story. that was for story. That will make great story coming up, and because that that hasn't all been wrapped oh, up and, and taken care of, and I had a really good workaround for it. It was a really good workaround. It, um, I loved the butcher shop. Scene. That, that was, was awesome. magnificent. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, Just give me a pen. Um, <laughs> I, I, I remember you, that. that was you. you. You were here for it. We'll what? tell you about it after this. No, stuff. that was you. You were the one that went and got the pigs. Tom got the pigs. Oh, oh. yeah, oh, from the butcher I shop. Samson. Okay, there sorry, you go. Sorry, sorry. So that was a great workaround, and I think the most fun that I had with that was reordered the human. You avoiding you mm-hmm. so that you didn't pollute your own yeah. past and getting caught because you didn't want the you before to catch you now when you went back to the you before. It was fantastic to watch him go, All right, I'm wait, I'm out front, right? Okay, hold on. Uh, we need to go around the other side. <laughs> God, I was a lot of lines. And just, trip. just so right. everybody knows, um, when you hear that, I planned that for two months. Yeah. Um, in real time. You're going to hear the episodes week to week, but in real time, I planned that workaround for two months. I mulled over that a lot to, to do it right. And there were a couple times that he came and went, hey, what if I did this? And I was like, well, you know. And he went, oh. And just yeah, for the record, right. Scott never said, yeah, he never said, no, don't do that. He was like, yeah, you could totally do that. <laughs> and those were the times when he went, I got to think that over. Yeah. And so for, for two months, Scott never said no. Right. Yeah. But Rico was like, he said no way too quick. I got to be smart about <laughs> he said, this. He said, yeah, I could do yeah, that. No problem. Yeah, way too quick. I got to, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah. yeah. So was, it was it was gorgeous. It was one of my finer points of role playing in my sure life. sure you can do that? Like, uh, I was in that episode and I'm still confused. Right. <laughs> well, and you went with him, and you're like, "Wait, what are we doing? What are we doing? Wait, hold what, on. You want to go where? Why, Why do I have to go over? Here? I got to count to thirty. Why? Why can't I just go? I'm a big damn wolf. Does it matter? Yeah. I, 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 really, I really was trying to help those pigs. Yo, oh, right. you did. It was great. Sure. It was. It was a great scene. You guys will hear it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. It was a fantastic scene. So true and vulnerability. Yeah. Tell me how that works. Don't quite know. I, I kind of evaded being hit by everything. Nice. That so is true. I, I'm That's not the best really, way to use it. I, out of all the people here, I think I've been hit the least. least. And, Which and really surprises hit, me because you were like you're because you're the you're the main you're tank. the tank. The second like, tank. kill everything. And I run out there in, in the front, but I just I never get hit. That's because you plan your actions really well, and I we have a really good uh, we we have a really good initiative set. Yeah. Well. Oh and, man. And, and I'll tell you what. And I'll tell you what. For being a tank, and you are, you're built like a tank, okay? For being a tank, you are the most crafty <laughs> and like, well, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do this so that I'm not in the line of fire just enough to, oh, they're dead. Okay, good. This, or, or, oh, they're incapacitated. Great. This is, this is, I, I It really kind of peeves me. This, this is kind of, this is my, my halo <laughs> training come in, coming yeah. into play. Mm-hmm. It's natural, like, okay. It's a survival. No, I'm going to pull off to the side, get one angle real far away, tap him till he's weak, let my <laughs> allies come in, wipe up some mess. I'm okay. And I'm good. What yeah. do you mean I'm tanking? I'm not, I'm not frontline tanking. Come on now. So, yeah. I honestly, I, I don't think I've been hit enough for me to really get much of Well, let me tell you how your true invulnerability works then, since you don't ever have to use it. What's the power rank of your true invulnerability? 100. You ignore the first 100 points of damage, period. Boom. You, ought, you Say you get hit for 300, 100 of that is taken off immediately because you are rank 100 invulnerable. Then armor, then everything How much else. armor do you have? I don't know. I, I don't think we ever like put a stat to that. All you, right. Yeah, you did. Don't you have natural armor as a power? You, no. I you thought are? you had armor as you well. Have you have armor every generation. Oh, yeah. oh okay, that's yeah. different. You so he's got armor. so he's got true invulnerability and in regeneration. That is fantastic. Regeneration cool. fifty. Yeah, which means you regenerate at a certain rate. 
on I top did. of take that off. Yeah. yeah. Which just, wow. That makes Marty hard to kill. Yeah. Incredibly hard to kill. Incredibly hard to kill. In fact, Marty's the only person I'm afraid of. Did you really? Yeah. I can't even I can't even touch you. Yeah, but I can't touch you, which is the issue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Even, is if, scary part. even if I roll a kill shot, you're Touche. taking one hundred of the hundred and seventy five off immediately. I won't yeah. even scratch you. Well, and then the next turn you get you're gonna get fifty of that back. Yeah. 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 So, so it's like next, next, next turn I did twenty five points of damage. But that's a that net twenty five. That's still good. Right. Out of how much health? I don't know. Yeah, you do. Well, add up your face. And add up your F A S E, and that's how much health you have. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, you think? Well, you guys are rocking like hundreds and three or four of these. 500. Yeah. What, what uh, 335. So 75, 75. That's 150. One, yeah, it's 150. 225. 225. Uh, 200 added. Okay, 425. 425. 425. That's a lot of health. At 25 each is enough for you to put a hurting on him. Not to mention the fact that he's at four column shifts with his side. And if he hits you for 25 points of damage where everything else he obliterates, again, that's why you scare him. It's just, you have time on your side. I'll just stand there and not be able to do anything. No, but when you do- but if you dodge successfully for a round, you're up 25 points. And then I'm back to normal. Right. Well, okay, well that, that's a bit of a, a bit of a hike. Yeah. It is the unstoppable, it is literally so, the unstoppable force in the immovable object. So it's Mace Windu and Falcon. Pretty right. Much. Okay. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. That's why you should main tank. I'm just just saying. I well I I kinda try, but do it. Yeah. Don't look at me. I have natural <laughs> inclinations. Not to tank, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Survival instinct. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna go out there and take a beating. No, no, let's not do that. So yeah, true vulnerability at one hundred automatically takes a hundred points away, period. Right. It just he ignores it. It sucks. And also things like drowning or suffocating or asphyxiating won't kill you. It doesn't? No. I didn't know that. I thought I thought it was just uh, damage. Yeah. No. Well, you take damage from drowning. Right, you take damage from drowning and from freezing. And from, and from freezing. From being standing in a I fire. Took damage to yeah. I thought it just like it was a condition and then you that condition is damage, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need to make your own armor before we start playing the next game. And you need life. to and you need to read up on true and vulnerability. It's sick. You need to read some more. Yeah. It's nice. It's yeah, pretty it's, great. It's, it's a great sick. power. It is potentially game breaking, but it's all right. Because I'm going to fix that here in a bit. Because <laughs> hey, we're, we're floating in space. Because you're floating in space. The the, the one of my the one of my two big powers. <laughs> you're like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna nerf that. <laughs> Take care of that. You guys don't poop, understand what's, all over. what's coming in Chapter 2. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. So we've reached the end of Chapter 1, ladies and gentlemen, and we didn't announce it. I don't know how well we announced it at the end of the last game. Um, but we've reached the end of Chapter 1. We are going into Chapter 2 here shortly. Um, we would. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or anything else they'd like to throw out to our listeners in, in regard to the system itself? No. I think it's... Good overview of what we yeah. just did. Okay. Um, if Scott gives you a link to the chart, you'll be able to understand it a lot better. Yeah. The chart is very visual. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's color, that's why color it's a gradation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be lazy. Go look at it. It's yeah. just color, color, color gradation. Is all yeah, it's color gradation, and we'll have a chart uh, link in the link to the show notes. Um, so that will, uh, you'll be able to click on that link and go see the chart while we're reading this, and you can look at it and, and roll around in it. Um, it's a really good system because, let's say you're playing, I've run uh, D&D, where everything is from feeble, um, feeble, poor, typical, good, and excellent was the highest rank that you could get. And we ran a D&D campaign using wow. the face rip system. It was a blast. Really? Oh, yeah. Because think about magical spells. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, you're wizard or you're fighter, and you can do feats. You can do column shifts. You can do... It does everything you okay. need to do in that setting. Yeah, and face rip doesn't have to be specifically for Marvel. You can face rip, face rip any system. Right. Any system can be face ripped. It's face rip is its is its own system. Uh, Marvel is just the module we're running for face rip. Right. Cool. Right. It's 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 really good stuff. Um, it's it's old. It's from the '80s, but it we grabbed onto it. Now there's a there's a second variant of this chart that actually splits yellow and pushes it up a little bit and makes it yellow and blue and adds a second 
so that you got green, yellow, blue, red, or green, blue, yellow, red, so that it puts another level of, oh, okay, you can uh, have a minor succeed, a success, a, uh, a success plus, and then an exceptional success. Hmm. So blue it makes green. it one more step in there that's, mm-hmm. that was a little bit later. Blue, green, yellow, red? Whatever. The blue is in there somewhere. I don't know how the hell that Jeez. works. I don't have that chart. That's not what the link is. It's I don't have that in front of me. Neither do you. Same from art, for color. Yes, for those of us that are colorly inclined, it would be whatever Marty says. Also, Marty's a nerd. Marty's <laughs> a nerd, and Marty makes it creepy. Yeah, and Marty makes it creepy. But I, I didn't this time. Well, no, no, you did. This was really good. It's just fun to say. It is. It has a ring to it. It's like a. It's like your jingle, dude. I will be putting that together as a bumper and uh, <laughs> be pulling some of your creepier moments out. That's it. That's Marty a, makes it creepy. That's a Christmas gift. Right? Yeah, there it is. That's coming. All right. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our podcast and listen to it regularly. Uh, we hope you enjoy listening to the stuff that we do. We, we do it for fun for us, but I, we've heard a great deal of feedback from people who listen to it and enjoy it and can't wait to hear next Thursday's episode. Um, I'm thankful for the for the gentlemen who show up every uh, month and let me beat on them and their characters. And uh, you hear from Josh regularly. Well, you know, if you're GM, let's do that. So I do recognize that I frustrate my players from time to time, but it's all oh. for, it's all for good story and moving forward. Oh, well, there's been no TPK yet. There's been no, no. party wipes. So no, yeah. no, not at all. Knock on wood. Um, so if if you listen to us regularly, please tell all your friends to to download us. And uh, head out, give us some stars on the iTunes. That's how we move up in the ranks and more people can hear about us and the, and the word can spread. Um, we're going to be spreading out and doing some other podcast stuff as we go, but the Marvel Live Play is our flagship game. Uh, that's where we are. That's our wheelhouse. That's what we enjoy. And we're basically going to be here to stay. Talk to you later, and we'll hear you'll hear from us real soon. Bye-bye. That's it tonight for us on the Gaming with Scott podcast. You can always send us an email at gamingwscott at gmail.com or catch us on Twitter. Josh Elliott is at Asmoday369. John is at JPM Garlic. Josh Jackson is at ActionJack853. Rico is at R1C0. Or me, Scott T, at GamingWScott. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash gamingwscott. Don't forget to check out nerdsdom.com for all their reviews and other great podcasts. Remember, be the superhero you always wanted to see in the world. As always, you'll be hearing from us real soon.